Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are going to be skinning the limbs of a fallen foe. <laughs> and then cremating him. Him being the willow tree that took over my in-law's backyard. Recently cut it down. They were kind enough to give me a bunch of the, the limbs. Probably would have been better to uh, get the, uh, the bigger chunks, but those were already vouched for, so I got these. We're going to be making charcoal. Now, this being willow, willow is one of the best charcoals out there for making black powder for pyrotechnics. So, gonna basically uh, peel the, the bark off these, uh, the skin basically, it's, it's pretty thin stuff because these are little branches. Cut them down into sizable pieces that'll fit in, uh, in my retort, and then uh, throw them in a fire. We got charcoal. <laughs> now this stuff is actually pretty easy to get the bark off. Give it a little cut. Biggest pain in the ass is getting under it. it. Tends to peel off pretty easy, and once you got it started, it goes pretty quick. Probably not going to do this whole batch, but but there is plenty here for quite a bit of uh, black powder. And the other cool thing, uh, now I'm not sure how well this is going to work because it's the thin bark, and I've only seen it done with the actual tree bark. But willow is actually what aspirin was originally derived from, well, cell cyclic acid. There's a compound in here that when it's oxidized in your stomach, or uh, what is it, first hydrolyzed and then oxidized in your stomach, turns into cell cyclic acid, which is a mild painkiller. So this is what was used for probably thousands of years. And my hope is that in another video, I'll be able to uh, extract some cell cyclic acid from it and potentially uh, made it with the acetyl group to actually make aspirin. So acetyl salicylic, acetyl salicyclic acid. There we go, one done. And now I'm just gonna rinse and repeat on quite a few more. So now that I've debarked a bunch of the willow uh, and removed the knots as best as possible, kinda cut those out, cause the knots are a denser wood, so it's, it's gonna kinda create embers in your uh, black powder if that's what you use it for. But I'm going to cut these to size to uh, fit a paint can. This guy is a reference. I should be using the bandsaw, but that is currently covered behind three ATVs. So, uh, not getting to that at this moment. So at this point, we probably cut enough to pack up the paint can, which from this point I guess I'll refer to as a retort. We're going to poke a hole in that. And that hole is actually going to sit down on the facing downward onto the actual fire that I'm going to build to get things started. At a certain point, once uh, once enough gases are created from the volatiles escaping from the uh, charcoal process or pyrolysis process, it'll actually start feeding itself. So the the volatiles will actually start combusting, and it'll kind of be a uh, chain reaction there. So in the bottom of the paint can, right about center, I'm just going to make a hole. And that a hair. You don't want to make your hole too big because when uh, when the pyro pyrolysis actually stops and then cool things cool down, air is going to rush back in there uh, through the hole, and that'll probably ignite some of your charcoal. So the less exposure to air, the better. So I'm just going to take this down, and that's about perfect. That'll let all the gases vent, and shouldn't allow too much air to kind of circulate through there to uh, cause it to combust too much. One important thing you do want to keep mindful of when you make that hole, obviously you're going to cre be creating metal chips, which you do not want in your charcoal because, you know, if you got little particles of steel in your charcoal, when you put it in your ball mill, if you're making black powder, you have the chance of sparks. So, empty that out real well. I'm actually going to use a microfiber just to make sure there's nothing potentially left in there. Got that pretty clean. Make sure this is nice and clean. Might have to cut a little bit more. Doesn't look like I'm gonna have quite enough to fully fill it. And the fact that this is curly willow makes it a little more challenging because it does not stack nicely. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut a couple more pieces. Wanna make it a reasonably full run. Otherwise, it's just a waste. 
So I'm over at my parents borrowing their fireplace <laughs> since uh, I do not have one. Throw a little kerosene on there. Here in fracking country, your, uh, your water comes with kerosene built in. It's uh, pretty awesome. Get things jump started. And we are off. Soon that'll be making beautiful charcoal via pyrolysis. It is a hot freaking day for this. Got enough swamp ass for Louisiana to claim me as a territory. So the process of making charcoal, you're actually taking the organic matter, which is wood in this case, and we're removing the water from it, so we're dehydrating it. And we're also hopefully driving off as many volatiles as we can. Wood gas is actually a pretty useful industrial byproduct, but in most applications it just gets burned off as we're doing here. Although you can actually purify it and, uh, and run stuff off of it. I think, uh, I think Nighthawk and Light may have done a video using it actually. So the fire's going pretty good now. I just uh, restoked it with some, uh, some pallet wood there that I had left over. You can see the nail sticking out of it. But I was trying to TP it around the, the can as best as possible to help keep those flames really licking the can. I can hear the, the gas escaping from the bottom of the retort already and really see it burning off down there pretty well. So it's starting to sound like a 747 taking off. You can see down there, that's the gas is all burning off. I'm sure there's a lot of water vapor in there too. A lot of heat. The nice thing about having it stoke itself is the smoke is greatly reduced. This process typically generates a lot of smoke and having the gases burn off like that helps keep the smoke down dramatically. Hoping that vent hole I made was big enough. <laughs> Sounds like pressure's building in there pretty good. So in just the last minute or so, the uh, jet seemed to slow down, which means I believe we have all the water driven off at this point, and it's just a nice steady stream coming out of the vent hole, which is uh, indicating that at this point it's just the volatiles being driven off. Our wood's probably fully dehydrated at this point. So we got the retort out of the fire and have given it a pretty good amount of time to cool off, probably an hour and a half. You don't want to open it too early because if the wood is still above its ignition point, you let fresh oxygen in. Got yourself a little charcoal barbecue going on. You see the, the can after just one firing is already hurting pretty good. Beautiful. Got some nice charcoal in there. Look at that. Beautiful charcoal. You can see how much the uh, the volume decreased. It's pretty incredible. Lost a lot of mass there and quite a bit of volume. But that is the end goal. Beautiful charcoal. So I'm just going to grab a uh, nice plate to throw this on and we'll check it for any incomplete portions, parts that didn't quite pyrolyze completely. All right, we got a pretty nice yield of uh, charcoal out of that little paint can there. Close to a pound, I'd say, probably. Should probably mass it and actually get a real number. Not that it matters, but just good to know. So at this point, I'm just gonna throw it into a couple Ziplocs and then smash it up into a nice charcoal powder. And of course, like the good old college days, I'm gonna double bag it. <laughs> Added protection when you're unsure. Got a few holes in the bag. Yeah, it's reasonably powdered. It's definitely still some chunks in there. Oh yeah, lots of big chunks in there left. Need stronger bags. These things suck. So just to screw around, I'm gonna Whip out a little, probably not allowed to say it on YouTube anymore, God forbid. I'll just call it stump remover. <laughs> you certainly couldn't Google it and find the ingredients. A little bit of charcoal. Now this is not how, <laughs> how to actually make black powder. One, I'm missing the sulfur. Two, I completely eyeballed the ratios here. In reality, I'd throw this in my ball mill in the correct proportions. A few hours later, you get a great black powder right out of it. 
Should probably throw a little sulfur in there just to make things right. So I'm just gonna add a pinch of sulfur. You can see I'm just totally eyeballing this. This is probably gonna be the crappiest black powder ever seen on YouTube, but just to show our final product in the works. All right, let's see what she does. All right, so I couldn't find my usual burn plate. I'm just gonna put it on some aluminum foil here a little bit. I'm gonna move this away so that I don't have some big chain reaction. Now this isn't gonna be very good black powder. Mortar and pestle really can't get down to a good molecular size, especially compared to a ball mill that you run for a couple hours. This, uh, it's probably gonna produce a lot of embers and stuff, but it might be a decent black powder. We'll, we'll see. Take a look. Yeah. Not too bad. So as you guys could see, that was actually pretty good uh, black powder, which surprised the hell out of me for just eyeballing the proportions there. But you can see that willow is super effective when used as the, wow, it is smoky as hell in here. But willow is an extremely good wood to use for black powder. And as I said, artists use it for charcoal drawings, all that sort of stuff. But if you happen to have balsa, willow, uh, there's another wood called Paulowina, I think it's pronounced, uh, probably butchering that pretty hard. But those all make excellent woods for uh, a very fast black powder. So this is kind of what you would use for lift powder to, to lift your shell into the air before it bursts. And also you could use it as the burst charge. The reason it's such a good wood for making charcoal for black powder, it's a very fast growing wood. So it has a very porous nature. It allows the potassium nitrate and sulfur to get into the pore structure and really kind of, I guess, uh, intermix, interdigitate really well there. And that is what makes it such a good wood for it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I finally got a Patreon, so if you want to keep the videos rolling and, uh, and if you enjoy them, please consider uh, donating there. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.